create like simple commands in SQL. And, uh, and that was it. Plus we had some theoretical background or some actually some background on databases, like how the database work, what's uh, the main components of a, any given database. So just a reminder, um, yesterday we have uh, took a look at uh, writing queries or writing SQL commands. So um, the, the commands that we, we just took a look at was uh, select command which uh, select actually uh, we talked about select that it's it actually it's used through three of data uh, from uh, SQL databases so uh, if you want to like retrieve all the columns uh, post the select you write star star meaning that all the columns and then from from meaning that you are just uh, like targeting a specific table and you have to give it the table name so in this instance the table name is xy um, if you want to know what's what are the table names that exist in a specific database, you can go ahead from your database, from the data view, you go to tables and you will have look at the databases you, or the tables you have in a specific database. Um, if you take a look at my database installation or my server installation, on the top, there is the server name, which is my server. It can be any name. It, uh, usually, if you install this by default, this is going to uh, uh, it's going to be called SQL Express. If you do not rename it explicitly, and uh, within that server or within that installation, you have like multiple databases installed under this uh, server name. So the main idea is you can have a single server, but that single server will have multiple databases installed within it, and each specific database, for example, we have this database called OILDB2, will have multiple tables connected to that specific database. So uh, you will write the commands like this, and then you click execute, you will, you will get all the data you want. So this is basically it. So uh, now we will try to uh, connect uh, SQL databases to use, into using Python, and then hopefully uh, do some dashboards or do some analysis with that as well. I know we have a short time. However, um, we will try our best into covering some of the most topics, uh, most important topics, sorry. So uh, before we go any further into connecting SQL and Python, so it's uh, very important to know like the basics of the Python if you don't know it. So I already know some people in, the, in this session who took the previous course we did on Python, which was like a 32 hour course. So they well known that uh, what's the Python is about. So however, some people are new to Python. So it's beneficial to go ahead and uh, talk about the Python basics. So uh, basically you have a programming language called Python. A Python is a very simple language yet powerful. Um, it empowers the user to create uh, different workflows, different calculations, and converts his uh, like equations, like uh, workflows in his uh, or her uh, workplace he works at, into like effective and uh, free solutions. Because Python is free, it's open source. Plus, it contains like a thousand, if not hundreds of thousands of libraries. That's the true power of Python. So um, we will start like 10 minutes in introduction to Python, and then we will try to connect uh, Python into database. So Python is actually is very simple. And you, in order to install Python, you have to install a package called Anaconda. Anaconda package, you can find it online. So let me show you where you can grab Anaconda. Again, um, I think some people in the, uh, in, from, in the participants know how to install Anaconda. Uh, if you go and write Anaconda Python, and you will be directed to like multiple uh, search pages. So the first one should come from a website called anaconda.com, and that's your target. You'll go there. Just wait for load, and then you go. Uh, you have something called Anaconda distribution, and you click download. Uh, what Anaconda is, is actually Anaconda is a package. Contains the Python compiler. Uh, an IDE, which means a uh, 
program you write your code in plus uh, tons of libraries that comes pre-installed. If you do not go and download Anaconda, you can go from the official web page of Python. Uh, by the way, Python have an official web page. It's called uh, Python Organization. You can go ahead from download it from Python. However, they will provide you with a very simple uh, installation. It will not have any external libraries. You have to install everything yourself. And in order to, co to cut to the chase and eliminate all the headaches, uh, we usually do not install Python using this website. We go to Anaconda, which contains all of all the things we need as engineers and specialists that uh, that we want. We might we might utilize in creating our solutions or workflows. And uh, Anaconda is very nice. It supports Windows, uh, Linux, and Apple or the Macintosh OS or Mac OS. Yeah, that's basically it. It's uh, if you go and uh, scroll down, it says like all the libraries that comes with. For example, it comes with um, Jupyter software. It comes with SciPy, Spider. So those are all just names of libraries and softwares that uh, comes by default with Anaconda. By the way, uh, if you install Anaconda, and you will have the option to like add like a lot of libraries to it. So it's not just a static package. No, you can add whatever you like to it. Yes, it's uh, it's a very nice. Uh, we actually we uh, utilize it in our all our courses, so uh, it's very easy to install. So this is an Anaconda installation, and I have connected a software called Visual Studio Code into an to Anaconda. You can do that if you do not have this uh, option. You can just go ahead and use a software called Spider that comes with Anaconda. Like this, it's it's very similar to Visual Studio Code. It does the same thing, um, so you can use whatever you like. So, uh, let's go to the important things. So, in order to um, so let's start first with the variables. So, by variables are the building blocks of any programming language. In Python, it's very different than other programming languages. Um, variables are dynamically allocated in Python, meaning that. Uh, whatever the value you assign to a specific variable, uh, depending on that uh, value type, Python will assign a type to this one. If you take a look, x is uh, is now is integer because uh, we assigned number 10 to it. If you put like 10.0, like so, now x is going to be float or a real number. So that's the power of Python. Let's define another variable called y. Um, if you put like double quotations in the assignment after the assignment operator, like for example, um, hello uh, from a webinar. Now y is considered as something called string. String meaning that um, you have multiple letters, mul maybe multiple numbers all combined together. And this is known as a string. And string can contain all the uh, all the special characters you want. It can contain number. It can contain a lot of a lot of things. However, um, the only downfall of using uh, strings like this is you cannot do any mathematical operations on it unless you convert it to like integer or float or something. So let's create another variable called z equals to like 125.5. Now this is a float. So if you want to add, like now we go to the uh, op mathematical operations. We will try to cover all the Python basics like in 10 minutes. So this is the variables and the variable assignment. This is all you need to know. So the mathematical operations, you have a set of mathematical operations. This is a multiplication and this is division. Um, this is uh, just uh, summation or uh, adding, the adding, and then you have the subtraction. These are all the basic four uh, operators you can use in Python in order to create all these mathematical um, uh, equations. It's not that hard. It's very simple. By the way, this is universal. It does not apply only in Python. It applies on almost all the programming languages out there, including the SQL. So let's go ahead and create a new variable called, um, let's call it uh, uh, x, let's call it xz, where this variable is x multiplied by z, and that's it. You can click run, 
the software will run, it will show this like nifty icon, means it shows success, meaning that the code has run successfully. However, the code, uh, the code itself failed to return any results because you need to specify um, the print statement uh, explicitly. So in order to view uh, any results or in order to print any result in Python, you will use this command or this function it's called print you will write it like this. You open and close parentheses and whatever you want to like print or, uh, or just let's go, let's make, let's call it, let's whatever you want to make an output, you will put it inside those uh, two parentheses. So for example, I want to output like the value of X, Z. If you click run, now this is the value of uh, X, Z. So let's go ahead and create another mathematical operation and let's call it a division. So um, let's divide the X by Z. This is how you divide, you create a division. By the way, um, you can do like chain multiple operators together, multiple mathematical, for example, uh, the, the, the outcomes from this division, I can multiply it by this newly created uh, variable, which is called X, Z meaning that whatever outputs you have, like whatever outputs you have from calculations, you can use it as an input in another calculation. So let's go ahead and print dev, which is meaning that this is a division. And let's click run. And there you go. Now you have two results. The first one is uh, 100, 20, uh, 1255, and the second one is 100. So this was the mathematical operations. So this is going to be number two. This is going to be number one. And uh, basically this is all the things you need to know about uh, Python in order to start working with it. You, we have a lot of, uh, actually you have a lot of uh, other keywords or commands we can cover. However, it takes some time, but basically this is how Python works. Um, for the variables, you don't need to like assign anything. Uh, you don't need to specify any type. Uh, it 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 gets to know the type from the type of uh, from the value you you assign to it. So um, let's go ahead and uh, create another code block by uh, clicking on plus code, meaning that I want a new code block. And um, quite quite often in Python, actually, uh, you will need to use like external libraries in order to like uh, do some plotting maybe you want to like uh, open a table or maybe open a file or excel sheet and uh, usually what we do in python we do not write the codes for these features because they are already been uh, coded and you can just utilize the uh, existing of uh, free libraries that can do uh, such things so I will direct you to, uh, to a website called uh, PyPy. So basically this website, so basically this website is a, uh, a repository for all the Python packages you can find. Uh, if you go ahead and navigate to this website, pypi.org, you will find there is uh, 418,000 projects, meaning that there is 418, thousand uh, Python libraries you can install. The installation is very straightforward. It's very easy, especially if you have Anaconda. You can go ahead and uh, download whatever library you like. However, we have like uh, such libraries that are very popular. For example, we have a library called Pandas. You write the library name and it shows all the uh, related search to it. So you can just search by keyword, for example, oil and gas, like production, like flow assurance, and it shows all the results uh, you will get. So assuming that we need a plotting library uh, in order to import or in order to connect an external library to your code, you will use the keyword import like so, and then the name of the library. Uh, for, in for this instance, I have a library called Plotly. It's written like this. Plotly is, by the way, is one of the most popular um, plotting libraries out there. It's interactive. It's very easy to use. And you can just uh, use it. It's free. So um, Plotly contains like the name of the library is Plotly. And it contains like a sub-library called Express. 
And this Express actually provides you with uh, like plotting functionalities. And uh, the convention in Python is whenever you want to use like Express, you will write something like plotly.express and then the functionality you want to use. But however, that's very uh, time consuming and it takes effort. Uh, the convention in Python is we, we just give it a name. The name is called alias. For example, you type as and then px, like the you, should, you give it an acronym. Um, now this library and the name of the class is now is uh, contained or encapsulated in the px. So if you do not get this, uh, please do not be worried. Uh, you, can, you can just go ahead and uh, review the video. You will uh, and search for whatever you did not understand and you will understand it for 100%. So now if you want like to create some plots, you can just go ahead and write px dot. Like if you want a line plot, you will write line. If you want a scatter plot, you will write scatter. If you want like a pi plot, you will write pi. It's actually, it's that simple. You open and close parentheses and you provide all the values you want. Now that uh, we have cleared that out, let's go ahead and um, try to write some Python code that connects to SQL. So, and by the way, I've already uh, prepared like a function that connects to uh, SQL and uh, we'll try to minimize the code. So in order to connect to SQL, actually you need two things. The first thing, so let me just type uh, commands. To connect to SQL, you need two things. The first thing, by the way, if you write hash pound in Python, this is known as command, comment. And the comment is not going to run in the program. This is just for a decoration purpose, or it's just, just cosmetic. It helps you to understand the code. So the first thing you need is something called the connection string. The connection string is actually is just a, uh, a string or just like some uh, letters and uh, some numbers that helps you to connect to that specific database. So if you if you remember from yesterday, uh, we had this uh, this box showing. Actually, this box is is a simplified connection string. You have the server name, you have the database engine, you have the username. So basically, this is the connection string. So you have to have the connection string. And second, you have to have the query, the query itself, like which was something like uh, select all from X, Y. This is known as a query. Or any like any change of commands, like multiple lines, multiple rows, and this is known as query as well. So let's go ahead and try to create a connection. Before we do any connection, uh, the data that's going to come from the SQL, it's going to be in a table format. And we need to capture that in a specific way. If you go ahead and try to maybe write this feature, maybe it will take like years for you to write and it's not going to be 100% functional. Um, luckily, uh, we have a library called Pandas. Pandas will help us to uh, read SQL tables uh, very easily and very efficiently. So. Let me import pandas. You will write something like this, import, import pandas. Pandas is the name of the external library. I, we usually give pandas as a name, as pd. This is just an alias, so you don't have to type uh, pandas each and every time you want to use it. And uh, let's now, everything is ready. Let's go ahead and try to uh, create a connection. In order to create a connection, you will type the variable name connection. You can name the variable anything you like. However, the connection should be saved in a specific variable. And uh, you have a, uh, a function that I created that creates a connection for you. It's called connect. This is just to encapsulate the code so you don't have like all those details uh, bothering you. So you will use this uh, single function, it's called connect. And that connect will, will have your connection string. So you'll have connection string. Connection string is actually is defined above. We have all of those things actually, this is the connection. 
so you don't need to write it. This is just how it's done. And now, if you want to read anything like uh, like a table from uh, from the database, you need to provide uh, the connection, which is here. And then you need to provide the query. So let's go ahead and write the query. So the query equals to, you open and close uh, quotations like this, and then you will write your query. So for this instance, I am going to import all the uh, like, all the values from the XY table. So select all from XY. Now this is the query. The only thing remains is me importing the data. So I will create a variable called data. This is where all the data or the table data will be saved. Equals to, now comes the role of pandas in order to retrieve those from uh, SQL. So you write PD dot, Whenever you write dot in Python libraries, actually you meaning that you want to uh, access functionalities inside that library. So um, there is a, a very nice functionality inside Panda. It's called read underscore SQL, meaning that you want to read data from SQL table. So you open and close parentheses. Um, this function read SQL takes two uh, arguments or takes two inputs to be precise. It takes uh, the query which is this one. Let me write the query, which is this one. And it takes the connection. Um, actually, the name of the connection is uh, connect. You open and close parentheses. And this is just, I defined it above. So you don't have like to be bothered with all the details. And that's it. Let's go ahead and click run on the code. That's it. Now you have this success and however, nothing did show meaning that we have failed to print any results so in order to print the result you will write print data and then click run and there you go now you have all your results uh, coming from the sql in a tabular format um if you're using an environment that's similar to this, which is uh, something uh, very similar, this is, by the way, this is uh, this is Jupyter. However, the, the coloring and the themes is different because it's Visual Studio Code. If you're using Jupyter, you don't need to use print in order to output anything. You just, um, you can omit uh, print and you can just write the name of the variable like this. I mean, this, uh, this will tell Python just print uh, whatever variable name is uh, written here. So let's go ahead and click run again. And there you go. Now you have a much better representation of our table. If you go ahead and compare it to the, our SQL and uh, our SQL uh, command that we have written and the result return, it will be the same 100% because uh, Python is using uh, SQL's engine in order to import uh, all the data. So um, if you if you notice, uh, the data is just too much to view. You have too much data. For example, you have 16 columns to view. And that's too much, by the way. This is not uh, how, how optimized softwares work. You have to specify like what columns you want to retrieve. You can do that very easily. We will replace this star with like any column name you like. Um, for example, I will retrieve the unique ID or I will retrieve the well name. I will get the x-coordinate and what the y-coordinate and the total depth. I think those are very sufficient for now. Let's go ahead and do that. So, and I will get the unique ID. So each and every column name will be separated with a comma like this. And you will type the next column name, which is x-coordinate, like so. And the next column is y-coordinate. And the final thing is t-depth. By the way, you don't have any limitations on how many columns you can get. You can add all the columns you want. Maybe you can retrieve 100 columns, but however, the less the columns you have, the faster your application is going to work. Once you do that, now we have replaced star with these four column names. You click run from here, and there you go. Now you have a much, much concise list of the wells uh, you have in here. So. And uh, by the way, there's a lot of things you can do with it. For example, if you want to like get the count or the number of wells you have, you can do one thing. So let's go create a variable called count or we call it well count. 
the number of wells equals to, you will write data. Data is actually is your uh, table, your SQL table saved as a variable. You open and close those brackets. Those bracket means you want to access a specific column. You provided a open and close quotations, and then you provide the table name, which is unique ID. And uh, that's it. If you want to know like the count, you pr you proceed it with a variable uh, with a function called len, which is uh, stands for length. Like so, you encapsulate uh, the data unique ID with length. So let's print well count, like so. Now you have 174 wells. By the way, you can do a lot of things with it. And this is just one of the ways you can achieve this. You can, you have like multiple ways to do so. Um, now let's go ahead and work with the production uh, uh, tables. Since so far, by the way, uh, the X and Y table are a static table because uh, all of those data are static and does not change. But before we go ahead and work with like production data, let's try to create a like base map. Base map, like this is a field map where um, the X and Y coordinates are plotted and then the wells are located. And we will try to uh, like name the wells uh, or put well names, uh, put well names on the plot. So in order to do that, you need to import plotly, as we talked about. So import plotly dot express as px. So this is uh, this is something you need to memorize. So in order to create the base plot or the base map, uh, let's create a a variable called figure, or let's call it um, base underscore map. You can name it whatever you like. Equals to px. The base map actually is uh, in oil and gas fields. They are represented uh, as uh, as a scatter plot. So let me show you. And uh, assume that we have uh, something similar to this. For example, you have this field, and you have like multiple well locations and different well types. This is basically is represented as a scatter plot in uh, in programming languages. So you have the x, and you have the y, and you can just put the well name on it. So let's go ahead and do that. So px dot scatter. A scatter actually takes uh, minimum takes uh, three arguments. The first argument it takes is the data itself, the table itself. So data. The second argument takes is the name of the X axis or the name of the X column, which is X coordinate coming from here. Um, the name of the Y coordinate coming from here, which is Y coordinate. By the way, the X and Y coordinates can be anything. It can be date and pressure. It can be like a cumulative production and the instantaneous rate. It can be anything. But for this instance, for the base map creation, we need it to be like X and Y coordinate. So Y coordinate. And uh, believe it or not, that's it. This is all you need to create a plot. So in order to view the plot, you will use something uh, uh, you just type the name of the plot, which is base map, and that's it. You will click run. So let me just zoom out everything. And there you go. And uh, we have some offset wells in here. Uh, it's offset at the scale. But however, you can just go ahead and zoom this. Like this is all the wells you have. It can be separated out. And you can do one thing. And uh, you can see the wells are missing the names <coughs> or the name tags. Sorry, you can just simply add it using the text functionality. You can just type text equals to the name of the column that contains the well names, which is in our case, it's a unique ID. So we will type unique ID, unique ID, and then we click run again. So let me zoom back. And there we go. Now you have your well names on top of each well. 
By the way, you can do a lot of customizations with this. For example, you can change the template from white to dark. For example, you, you provide a, uh, a feature or you provide a variable called a template equals to plotly underscore dark, meaning that I want to activate the dark theme. So let's click run. And there you go. Now you have your dark theme activated. And this is it. So let's go ahead and jump to the next uh, exercise, which is working with production data. I will create a new code block. I will just copy uh, those things because we will need them. I will paste it in here. We have pandas, we have Plotly Express, and now we have the query. By the way, the query that now, this uh, it's not a sufficient query for us because we want to work with production data. And the production data itself is lying on another table. The table is called PRD, not XY. So you will delete this. You will provide a new query. So let's go ahead and try our query in SQL Management Studio before we go ahead and do anything in Python. So uh, working with Python and SQL, you will have to, the two softwares open at the same time. You will prototype things in SQL Server. And once those things work and it's reliable, you can just transport it into Python. So let's uh, just select our database. And then uh, let's try a few commands, a few production commands actually. So um, let's go ahead and uh, do select, select all from PRD. PRD is the table that contains all the production data. And click on execute. There you go. Now you have your production data. What I will do is I will just copy this like as is uh, without like doing any manipulations. If we need to do any manipulations, we'll do it later. For example, um, paste it in. So, uh, sorry, uh, let me just copy it and paste it in the query. Now everything still stays the same. The connection is the same. By the way, the connection is going to be same for all the functions you use. However, the only thing will change is the query itself. So let's go ahead and view the data by typing the name of the variable that contains all the data. We click run. And there you go. Now you have your data. Uh, you have the unique ID or the well identifier. You have the date. You have the hours, like hours on production. You have the oil, gas, and water, and you have all those uh, columns. So assume that you want to like plot like the oil production against the date. That's uh, fairly simple to do. So we will do one thing. Before we do that, let's just filter like this table to only to a specific well. So let's go ahead and filter it to this well. Let me just copy the well name. And uh, we will type the where command where unique ID, which is the well name, equals to, and you will paste the well name. We actually, we seen this in action yesterday. This is just a reminder how you filter. Uh, your table based on a specific well name. So you will get all the rows that correspond to that specific well name in that specific column. You will click on execute. Now you're only getting that specific well. If you take a look, the uh, results actually is only 223 rows, whereas the original results was 21,000 rows. So let's just go ahead and copy this and modify our query. So in order to incorporate this single well, you will click some spaces and then you paste. By the way, you have to make sure that uh, um, your quotations are not just uh, uh, colliding or overlapping. If you are using like inside the single quotations for the outside, you have to use like this double quotations. So it does, does not like uh, collide and create some problems for you. So let's go ahead and print data. After our filtering, click run. Now we are getting the same results as in SQL. 
always compare your results with the SQL Management Studio. They should compare fairly, it should be the same, by the way. So let's go ahead and create some plot. So before creating a plot, I will save the plot in a figure called FIG equals to PX dot. So what I want to plot is actually, I want a line plot like so. You open and close parentheses and then you provide the three required arguments. The first thing is the data table itself and then the X coordinate or the X uh, axis. I want the X axis to be date. I am getting date from here. By the way, uh, the way it's represented, that's the way you will write it in the code. Otherwise, it will throw an error. So you cannot just go ahead and uh, mess around with like the capital and the small letters. The way it's written, you have to write in that way. The Y is going to be the oil, which is oil production. Let's go ahead. In order to print this plot, you will write figure FIG. And that's it. Let's click run. And there you go. Now, this is the production you have. If you want to view the production as a scatter, you change line to scatter like this and click run again. And there you go. Now you're reading your production as a scatter plot. So um, let's just put it back to line. Click run. And there you go. By the way, this is a live feed from SQL. You can see it's fast. And what happens when I delete this where statement? When you delete the where statement, actually meaning that you don't want any filter to apply it on your results. Let's go ahead and click run. And you can see we are getting messy results because we have multiple well results are interfacing with the same plot. This is actually, this is not a good practice. You need a way or you need a specific way in order to divide your wells like into like a specific entity. So in order to do that, it's actually, it's very simple. You have to provide the color for each well. So uh, we will provide color equals to the column where it contains the well names, meaning that the wells are going to be divided into different colors. And each color is going to be a specific curve of its own. So let's go ahead and click run. Um, just wait for it. It should show. Yes, that's it. Now we have all our wells. By the way, I think this is uh, 200 or something wells or more than that or viewing on the same plot. If you want to view like a single well, you will just double click on it. It will view only that well, like so. And you can just turn on or turn off any well you like. You can just compare uh, the wells together, you can do one thing. You can just uh, zoom on a specific portion you want to do so. So this is basically how to like create like a production plots. So um, let's do one more thing. And I will copy um, these three uh, or these four things into a new code block. I will still work with the production it will stay the same let me go to the sql itself let's just uh, take a closer look at the production table the production table actually does not contain something called the water oil ratio or it's the ratio of water uh, or the, it's the ratio of water divided by oil so we, you need to create that. The reason that it's not specified, actually, this is easily easy to calculate. That's why it's not specified. And it's missing something else. It's missing the gas oil ratio or the GOR. You can do, you can go ahead and create that calculation as well. So uh, let's go ahead and do those things. Uh, first of all, I will import the well name only, and then, I will calculate the gas oil ratio. So in order to calculate the gas oil ratio, you open and close parentheses in SQL and divide the gas by the oil, or sorry. And um, for the gas, which is the gas rate, divided by the oil rate. 
usually this throws an error if you have like any zero on the uh, denominator because uh, you cannot divide anything on zero in programming. Let's click run. Yeah, divide by zero in counter. By the way, this is very easy to, uh, to solve. The only thing you need, you need to filter any value of oil that's greater than zero. So let's go ahead and do that where oil is greater than zero and it should work now. There we go. Now we have our gas oil ratio results. Uh, the only thing missing is that gas oil ratio that we calculated is does not have any column name. So in order to give a column name to this calculation, you will type as, for example, GOR. Click run again or click F5. And there you go. Now your gas oil ratio has a column name. So let's go and transport this into Python. Let me just copy this and paste it in here. And I will copy the, uh, the filtering function and paste it in here. And that's it. So let's go ahead and create our plot. So figure equals to, sorry, figure equals to plotly express dot, for example, line. I want a line plot. I will provide the data. The X axis is going to be date. By the way, date is missing. So I need to add date explicitly. So date, if you take a look at the SQL, we did not import the date, which is wrong. You have to import it. So you can import it like this, date, and click run, and uh, you get the date as well. So uh, let me just move this around. There we go. So on the x-axis, I will plot the date. On the y-axis, I will plot the gas oil ratio. GOR, which I just calculated. So figure to view the plot, click run. And there we go. Now you have the same effect, multiple well interfacing together. In order to solve that, you will use the color attribute or the color functionality. I will set the different colorings for each and every well. Click run again. And I think we're getting an error, yes, uh, because uh, the name of the column are written in different casings. So unique ID, click run. And there you go. Now you have uh, GORs for different wells colored um, differently. So this is uh, solely actually depends on your, the qualities of the data you have. By the way, uh, if you take a look, the GOR actually uh, should be multiplied by a thousand. Uh, you don't need to go to uh, SQL to do that. You can just do it in the uh, query itself. For example, uh, you will see these parentheses. I will go just type thousand and multiply it by the ratio itself. Click run again. And uh, everything should be uh, good. Yes, now you are, your GR is actually is much, much more representative. And there you go. Now you're comparing multiple GRs together. So uh, the last thing remains is I want to show you is how you can create like uh, a live uh, dashboard using uh, Python, SQL, and some oil and gas knowledge. So basically what I am viewing here is that this is a something called a dashboard. A dashboard is actually just an interface for your Python code. Um, this is as easily shareable and you can use any data source you like. For example, I'm using a live feed from uh, SQL. What I am doing actually is I am getting, in this dropdown, I am getting all the wells that sits in the database. And I am just putting them all here using like a single line of code, you can select multiple wells. Each the wells you select, actually it will add like a single plot for each well. So for example, let's do that. Let's add another well. Now you will have three plots. Just wait for it to load. This is, there you go. Now you have three plots. Let's go ahead and add another well. Now you have four plots. Um, this will give you like the ability to compare like multiple wells together. For example, this application I created is actually is uh, doing something called data fitting or it's fitting actual, it's doing regression on your data itself. You can select like the, the number of the regression or the order of the regression from here. For example, number one means that this is a linear. 
Um, number two means that this is a polynomial second degree regression. You can see that shape of the line changed. This is third degree linear regression. Yeah, this is nice and all, but what if you want to like export the data that behind the calculations? Let's go ahead and do that. We will add a button uh, below those plots. Once I click the button, they all the data is going to be copied to my like my click or something. So let's go ahead and do that. And this is the file itself. I not go through the file and all the functionalities you have. If you go uh, and participate in the course, you will learn how to do such a thing. It's actually, it's uh, simple, not that hard to do. So let's create a button. So we will call it export underscore button equals to st dot button. We will add, st by the way is library called Streamlit that provides all the dashboarding functionality. So we will call it um, click me to export. So if the export button is clicked, then let's do something. I have a data called data frame underscore filtered, meaning that this is a filtered data. So in order to export this filter data, you have to use this function called to clipboard, meaning that you want to just copy this to your clipboard or into your mouse click. You open and close parentheses and that's it. Save everything, go back to your chart or go back to your uh, dashboard. Now you will have a new button added. It's called click me to export. So let's go ahead and click it and it should be exported by now. Let's go ahead and open Excel sheet. So we, in order to paste everything to an Excel sheet. And uh, once we uh, paste this, we will get the historical data plus the calculated prediction data, which is coming from the, the uh, data fitting. And let's just paste this. There you go. And you have, those are the well names. You have the date and you have something called uh, predicted oil, which is the oil prediction that we did. You can just go ahead and plot it with date. So um, to this end, actually our, call, uh, our webinars end. So uh, hopefully you have gained some new knowledge.